By the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be reading from the second letter to Corinthians, second letter to Corinthians, in chapter 12. The second letter to Corinthians, chapter 12. I will be reading through verse 10, 1 to 10. It is doubtless not profitable for me to boast. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago, whether in the body I do not know, or whether out of the body I do not know. God knows such a one was caught up to the third heaven. And I know such man, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows how he was caught up into paradise and heard inexpressible words, which is not lawful for a man to utter. Of such a one I will boast, yet of myself I will not boast except in my infirmities. For though I might desire to boast, I will not be a fool, for I will speak the truth. But I refrain, lest anyone should think of me above what he sees me to be or hears from me. And lest I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of the revelations, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger from Satan to buffet me, lest I be exalted above measure. Concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart from me. And he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I would rather boast in my infirmities, but the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in needs, in persecutions, in distresses, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Praise the Lord, brothers and sisters. These are the words of Apostle Paul. Apostle Paul was a man of God, selected for a specific and special mission to preach the gospel to the nations. And not only, until this very moment, we read his doctrines, we read what he taught, and he still continues teaching us all. Praise the Lord. Apostle Paul was used to be, before Christ visited him while he was going to persecute the church in Damascus, was a very strong man very strong. He was powerful among his um, environment as a Pharisee. He was strong because he had authority from the high priests and the Pharisees to persecute the church of Christ. As he said with his own words, he was Israelite, Jew, from the tribe of Benjamin, Pharisee, very knowledgeable. He was taught by one of the most important persons at the time, Gamaliel. He took all his teachings, all his doctrines, he took everything and he became very famous in the environment of the religion at the time. However, when Jesus visited him and he saw this vision which was, in my opinion, brothers and sisters, the most important vision that one could see. He saw the light. He didn't see paths, he didn't see ways, he didn't see gates to be opened. He saw nothing else but light. Nothing else but light. And we know very, very well that the, the light is Jesus Christ. He saw Jesus himself as he is in heaven. Light. Nothing else. And when he saw the light, he felt the most weak person in the world. Because brothers and sisters, we think we are strong when we do not live in God's presence. Because we rely on our powers, on our authorities, on who we know. 
on who we are. Because we think sometimes that we are somebody that can do anything. Whereas at the end of the day, without the light, we are nothing and useless. Nothing and useless. Yes, we might be very successful. Very successful in our roles, in our jobs, in our environment, in our community, everywhere. We could be very, very strong because we have a name. As Apostle Paul had, he was a Pharisee, very powerful one. However, when he saw the light, he realized that he was nothing. And from that day on, when he understood his reality, his weakness, he asked Jesus and said, Lord, what should I do? And everything was changed from that moment. And from that moment, we see a man very powerful, but in the spirit. Different power now for Apostle Paul. He was powerful in the spirit. He had revelations. The Lord taught him his doctrines. He gave him the gospel that he should be preached everywhere. To Israelites, to the Gentiles, everywhere. The same gospel. And brothers and sisters, yesterday night I was reading this passage and I was so amazed and I will tell you the reason. Apostle Paul said, I know a man, and of course, he speaks about himself. I know a man in Christ, a man in Christ, not an ordinary man. When he speaks about himself in the spirit, he speaks about a man in Christ. Who 14 years ago, 14 years ago, whether in the body I do not know or whether out of the body I do not know, God knows, such a one was caught up to the third heaven. And I know such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows how he was caught up into the paradise and heard inexpressible words, which is not lawful for a man to utter. He saw brothers and sisters, our future. That's why he has the boldness to say in his first letter to Corinthians, listen to his words and you will understand the spiritual knowledge that this man had. But as it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. He saw it. That was not an imagination. That was not just a teaching that he had. But it is something that he saw with his own eyes. He saw the glory of the Lord. He saw paradise. He saw our destination, brothers and sisters, our final destination, the place that we all strive to go. He saw it. And that's why he speaks with that confidence and certainty. And while he speaks like that, no one is able to doubt on his words. Because now he explains what I've told you what I told you in the first letter, brothers and sisters, he said, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of a man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. Those things I saw. I saw them with my own eyes. I was transferred, caught up to the third heaven, and I saw everything. I'm not allowed to say nothing more though. I'm not allowed. But the only thing I can tell is what I saw with my own, my own eyes. Like John, Jesus' disciple said, we're talking to you about what we have seen, what we have touched, what we have experienced, 
about the Lord of glory. So who am I to doubt what these people have, wrote, have written in our book that we're reading? About a man full of power, now full of weakness. But he saw the Lord in his kingdom, in his glory, in his majesty. And he was amazed by what he saw. Of such a one, I will boast. Not about me. Not of me. Not of what I have done, because what I have done is really, really bad. And it was a loss in the knowledge of the majesty of Jesus Christ. But from that man in Christ, I will boast. Because it's not him, but it's Jesus Christ in him. And brothers and sisters, this is today the message from the Lord. It's not me. It's not you. But the persons in Christ. If I'm going to speak about myself, I have nothing to say. Nothing to say 100%. But what we are in Jesus, brothers and sisters, this is by the Lord. This is Jesus Christ. If we have something good in our lives, it's because we saw the light. And the light came in our lives and dwells in our hearts. And we live in it. We breathe in it. We move in it. All of our lives is in this light when we are according to our call. Apostle Paul was according to, our Paul, to, to his call. Now, brothers and sisters, these last months, the Lord always speaks to me about the power of the Spirit in the first apostolic church. And that's why today this message, I believe, is from the Lord, brothers and sisters. Because if we want to live and experience what happened in the first apostolic church? We must live as men and women in Christ. The one that Apostle Paul explains here. And we will see through the word of God what he meant with this. The first thing that he said is, of such a one, I will boast. Yet of myself, I will not boast except in my infirmities. So, brothers and sisters, we must be ready to have infirmities in our lives if we want to experience the spiritual miracles and blessings that the first apostolic church had. Do not expect, brother and sister, to live a blessed and glorious life in the Holy Spirit and praying and asking the Holy Spirit to come and reveal all these miracles, all these healings, all these blessings, if we wish to not have infirmities and weaknesses in our lives. Because if we don't have such things in our lives, we will start boasting of ourselves. And we will believe that we are somebody we are someone because of the healings, because of the blessings. That's why the Lord allows difficulties and problems in our lives because he's now ready to come and shed his blessings in our lives, brothers and sisters. And we will see a different church than the one we used to know until this very moment. Are you ready? Am I ready? The Lord will allow things in our lives because he wants us to boast on those things and not in the blessings and the miracles he will perform. Otherwise, we will start saying, Oh, Jesus, we healed many sick people in your name. We never. The Lord did everything. The only thing we had is infirmities. Difficulties, weaknesses, sicknesses, 
Whatever it is called, but is given by the Lord, so every one of us must be humble and waiting upon the Lord. For though I may desire to boast, I will not be a fool. I will have every right, Apostle Paul said, to boast on my experiences, that I was caught up in the third heaven. I was caught up in paradise because everything is true. Everything is true. The Lord gave it to me. I saw it. And I won't be a fool if I boast. But I refrain, lest anyone should think of me above what he sees me to be or hears from me. I will never boast about the things that the Lord has given me. So you see, brothers and sisters, two different people. The flesh and the spirit. The Paul, the man, Paul the man, and the Paul who is the servant of the Lord. He lives in Christ. Yes, every day he wakes up and he sees the thorn in his flesh and he suffers from it. He's troubled, troubled by it. However, he prayed, he says, Concerning this thing, because he explains, brothers and sisters, that unless I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of the revelation, so we have to put everything in, on the scale. What do I want? Do I want a life full of revelations? Abundance, the word of God says. Abundance of revelations. But with infirmities, with weaknesses, with persecution. If someone could see Apostle Paul, he could see a man full of marks. He was wiped. He was persecuted. He was thrown in jail. He was beaten. He was dragged as a captive. As he himself said, not that I speak in regard to need in the, Philipp the letter to Philippians, for I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. I know how to be abased and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I have learned both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. He didn't say I had a blessed life. I enjoyed my words. Everything was successful and perfect in my life. I enjoyed everything. I had so many blessings. I was always full. I've missed nothing. But instead... Apostle Paul comes and says, I have learned to be abased and I know how to abound. I've learned to be full. I've learned to be hungry. And the question is, all of us have learned to be full. All of us. <laughs> full in everything. We have our houses, Every day our table is served, we have food, we have luxuries, we have things that make our life easier, beautiful, we have options. Which one to, to choose, this one or that one? Should I put a bit of more money to get the most luxurious one or this one? We have choices. Apostle Paul had no choice. If he could, he would be full. If he couldn't, he would be hungry. But the word of God says, and sometimes brothers and sisters, we use this verse for everything, but it's not for everything. This verse, it's a very spiritual verse. Because the context that Apostle Paul used for this verse, it's for his situation. 
When he says, I can do all things, that means that I can do to be hungry, and I can do to be full. I can do to be abased, and I can do to be abound. I can do all things like this through Christ who strengthens me. But remember, he is a man of God. He is a man in Jesus Christ. That's why he has this boldness to say, I can do all things. The question is, can we say the same? Before we say yes, we, think, we must think of our state. How we are today. I can do all things. Can I? Then why am I praying for all the things? If I could, I shouldn't be praying. I should go to my Lord, use my faith, and go, Lord, I can do all things. <laughs> but we can't. Because we are not in the same state as Paul. And we know who Apostle Paul was and how he expressed himself by saying, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Because he strengthened him to be hungry. He strengthened him to go through difficulties and turmoils and through jails and through persecution and through all things that he suffered. But we can say, I can do all things because I can buy something better. I can do something better. I can do things for my life. Is that exactly what the Lord meant? No, I can do all things in spirit, brothers and sisters. I can do all things when I live a life in Jesus Christ. With persecutions, with difficulties, with problems, with troubles, with everything. Then, yes, the Lord will give me strength to go through everything. He didn't say in the place of Philippi, oh, please don't take me to jail because I'm a Roman. He used his state after he was jailed. Because he knew that he could go to jail, he would be beaten, he would be wiped, whipped, sorry. And then, when the earthquake started in the jail, and all the doors of the cells opened, this man, the God, was ready to commit suicide because he thought that he lost everything. But he was a sheep. And the Lord used the persecution that happened to Apostle Paul to bring him and his family into the Lord's sheepfold. That's why Apostle Paul can say, I can do all things. I can go through jail in order for this man and his family to be saved. Yes, I can do all things for this girl in Philippi to be relieved and delivered from the spirit of Python and become free. Yes, I can do all things for Jesus Christ because he gives me strength. So, brothers and sisters, let's not misinterpret, misinterpret the verses of the Word of God. I can do all things means that I can go through everything for Jesus. When we take these decisions in our lives, yes, we could do all things, all things. Go through difficulties, through persecution, through everything for him. But we must separate the flesh from the spirit. The flesh should die, the spirit should rise. If this will happen in our lives, brothers and sisters, new things will start for every one of us. Sometimes we, we think and we pray, please, Lord, make us as the first apostolic church. Have we realized what we have been praying for? Have we actually realized that? Just go and read what the first apostolic church went through. Don't read the good things and the miracles. 
Read about the persecutions. Read about the men of God who suffered for Jesus. Yes, everything was perfect in a spiritual way. But think about the rest. Are you ready to have everything in common with everyone? <laughs> Am I ready? I don't know. Are you ready to renounce what you love in this world in order to live the life of the first apostolic church? Because many times, brothers and sisters, we say it's good to live the miracles and the blessings, yes. But in order this to happen and in order not to be, to boast about ourselves, the Lord will bring everything else together. We have seen our brothers and sisters now in difficult situations, like in wars, like in difficulties. And we can see, of course, the hand of the Lord to be with them. But see the contrast. See the contrast. What's their life and what's their spiritual life? Because we will experience the Lord when we have difficulties in our lives, brothers and sisters. Not when we feel strong in flesh. Not when we feel smart and good and that we have everything. We can change many things. We can increase our wealth. This is not the first apostolic church. There is a contrast of what we're praying for and what we live. Now, it is better if we start praying in a different way. Lord, we want to see you. If we want to. We want to see miracles in our lives. We want to have our church in the fire of the Holy Spirit. We want to see your glory. We want to see you healing our sick, blessing those who suffer. But Lord, at the same time, give us the strength that we will be able to do all things at all times. As your holy man did, Apostle Paul, Apostle Peter, all these people of God who saw, who saw the power of the Holy Spirit in their lives. Brothers and sisters, we live in the last days and we must realize that we live in the last days. And we have connected the last days with the coming of the Lord. We have connected the coming of the Lord with blessing is his church, that his church will be glorified, that he, his church will be exalted. The mountain of, uh, of the church of Jesus will be raised among, ab above all mountains. Yes, it is true. It is written in the Bible. But in order these things to take place in our lives, we must change our way of thinking. We cannot ask only for the good things, but we must always ask for, for everything that the Lord wants to give together with the blessings. We remember there were people who actually could not follow what happened in the first apostolic church, like this couple, Ananias and Sapphira. They thought, but could live in their way in the first apostolic church. Do you remember what happened? The strength of the Spirit could not let them live in their lies because no one can lie to the Holy Spirit, brothers and sisters. It's a blessing to live His life, but it's a biggest and massive bl blessing for us if we live it His way, not our way. Because, brothers and sisters, you know, the Lord will come. We know that. His church will be exalted. Those who are ready to live a Christian life, a spiritual life like that, 
must be ready for everything because there will be others who will enjoy the blessings in the church, but they won't leave the final blessing from the Lord when he will come and give his reward to every one of us. This is the word of God, brothers and sisters. Do we want to have abundance in the revelation from Jesus? I would say amen. Are we ready to receive strength to do all things as Apostle Paul explained for himself? If we are, yes, we'll leave them. Because many people, brothers and sisters, heard the teaching of Apostle Paul, but not many lived in them. Not many saw them take flesh and blood in their lives. But now Jesus is calling every one of us. He says, come, come. I'm ready to give you everything that I have. My blessings, my, my spirit in abundance in your life. I am ready. The problem is that you are not. You are not. I want to give you everything, but you are not. If I give you everything, I will lose you, said the Lord. I will lose you. Because you want to have everything for me, but when you have an, an infirmity, a difficulty in your life, oh Lord, please, deliver me. And when I'm coming back to you and I say to you, my grace is sufficient for you. You don't like it. You don't like it. Because the grace is not to live in a healthy body. The grace is not to live in a beautiful house. The grace is not to live a free life. <laughs> we can see what the grace means for Apostle Paul. The grace was to be captured, the grace was to be jailed, the grace was to be beaten, but he had the abundance of revelation from the Holy Spirit. Brothers and sisters, I believe this is one of the hardest sermons I've ever heard. Because for me, Personally, brothers and sisters, it changed the way I used to see the Bible. For me, it changed the way I used to expect the blessings from the Lord to come. I was always believing that the Lord will come and give us and pour His Spirit and give all these gifts of the Holy Spirit in our everyday life as we are now. Jesus comes and says, if I give you everything as you are now, you will be puffed. You will boast. You will become proud. And no one will be able to bring you down to earth again. And I will lose you. And when I come to rapture my church, you will come back and say, Lord, in your name, we prophesied. Lord, in your name, we cast out demons. Lord, in your name. I have never known you. Brothers and sisters, today, I want, at least for myself, but I believe for every one of us, to pray so that we will be always known by our Lord even if we do not have all these abundances and revelations, but at least to enter in the kingdom of God, no matter what, no matter the cost, no matter if we are sick, no matter if we have infirmities, no matter if we are going through troubles, praise the Lord for those. Praise the Lord for those. Because the end it will be to enter in the kingdom of heaven. That's what we want. That's what we want. To live with him. Always. In eternity. 
That's why Apostle Paul comes in the letter to Romans and says, don't think about the temporary sadnesses and sorrows that you have on this earth. Don't worry, because you will have an eternal load of blessing after all this. Yes, if we can try and make our lives better, it's good. Even Apostle Paul tried to do so. That's why he said, I know how to abound. I know how to be abased. Yes, it's good. But do not trouble yourself for your troubles and difficulties. The Lord is near. That shows that the Lord is near. That's why he said, even if you walk in the valley of the shadow of death. Why does he say so? Couldn't he just take us out of the valley of the shadow of death? He could. But he said, no, you have to go through it. And that's where you will experience my hand in your life. In the valley of the shadow of death. Of course, we will be praying, please, Lord, deliver us from the valley of the shadow of death. Of course. But the Lord says, I will be with you. In the valley of the shadow of death, I will be with you. So what do I want? To be outside the valley of the shadow of death, but without Jesus? No. <laughs> no, never. Even in difficulties, even in troubles, brothers and sisters, always with him until the end. In order to succeed, to succeed in doing so, we must be, like Apostle Paul said, I, I know a man in Christ. A man in Christ. He didn't say, oh, you know, brothers and sisters, 14 years ago, I had this magnificent experience. He didn't say so. But we say so. At least for myself. When I express my experiences, oh, you know what I have lived, what I have happened to me. I know a man in Christ. There is no I in this sentence. There is no ego in this sentence. There is nothing in this sentence. It's a man in Christ. When he speaks about himself, I will speak about my inter infirmities. <laughs> I will speak about my thorn in the flesh, about the messenger of Satan that buffets me, lest I be exalted above measure. He had abundance in revelations, and if he was to be exalted, he would be exalted above measure. So, brothers and sisters, let's allow Jesus Christ to come in our lives as he wants to come. Let him come freely. Sometimes we sing and we pray to the Lord, I surrender all. Let's do this now. Let's so stop singing it and let's doing it. I surrender all. May the name of our Lord Jesus Christ be glorified, brothers and sisters, in our lives. And let's now stop asking for experiences and blessings for the Lord, but not for us, but the men, for the men in Christ. Hallelujah. Amen.